Today on Straight Talk, I'm with Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, the director of GBAC. Gavin, how are things in your crazy world? Uh, things are going well, Jeff, but we're still busy and we're still seeing, as you saw, you know, today's Wednesday, yesterday was Tuesday, and yesterday was the most significant day we've had in the US for the COVID-19 pandemic since it began. Yeah. Everyone wants to know what can they do. Tell us this, uh, Gavin, what does a GBAC team consider to be one of the big game changers for the cleaning industry in 2021, which we're just now into? One of the big challenges for the, the Global Biorisk Advisory Council, the GBAC team right now, is keeping up with all the new technology that's coming down the pipeline, Jeff. And so I really think that 2021 is going to be the, 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 the year that defines the use of real world evidence. Uh, we're seeing it in hospitals and other healthcare settings, but I think we're going to see, see this also in the clean industry, the use of real world evidence for decision making. Um, it's going to in, in significantly improve uh, the way that we do things, how we do things, what we buy and what we use. It's going to reduce costs. It's going to boost efficiencies. It's going to increase acceptance um, throughout all sectors, as well as the general public, on the value of real world evidence in helping drive the adoption of new technologies, new devices, new approaches, new procedures. And I think one of the big things for the clean industry is going to be the number of new products that are going to come out in 2021 using UV light. And this is going to be huge. I've seen a lot of uh, talk about UV light. Um, some of it might be a little um, consumer driven. But tell us this, does UV light actually kill germs and bacteria and viruses on high touch point surfaces? Does it work? Yes, it does, Jeff. Jeff, and I think everyone from hospital workers to cleaning staff to office janitors have been using UV light now for years to help disinfect objects and services, those high touch services. We now know that UVC light can in effectively inactivate because we can't kill a virus, we have to inactivate the virus, can infect, effectively inactivate the SARS-CoV-2 virus without the use of chemicals. And now it's become a very attractive option for, dis for disinfection, for example. All right. One thing that we see a lot of, of um, examples would be UV light and robots, obviously to move around and do this type of disinfecting. Tell us about that. What's going on with the robots? Oh, this, this is very exciting right now because I think uh, what we're seeing is that, uh, again, it's UVC light is what we're using. Uh, the, that UVC light has wavelengths of around about 207 to 222 nanometers. That's very important. But we're now seeing uh, that UVC light is the weapon of choice uh, for, for autonomous robots that are designed to clean rooms, public spaces, and schools. Um, I'm working with a lot of airports at the moment, and convention centers, stadiums, and arenas, and I'm seeing that these facilities are now buying these autonomous robots. Now, we're still very challenged when it comes to cleaning and disinfecting high-touch services with say our traditional chemical solutions in any room. Now, again, our cleaning staff, there's not enough of them and they don't have enough time. But we're now seeing right now, these many examples of these smart robot, robots that follow a cleaning route that can be programmed and controlled by an app, say on your phone or your tablet. The robots can use UVC light, photocatalysts, negative ions, HEPA filter meshes, uh, honeycomb ceramic filters to clean the air. Now, and we're now seeing real world evidence where many of these robots can disinfect an area of say a thousand square meters or 10,800 square feet in say a hundred minutes with a 99.99% or a four log reduction disinfection. And what's really cool with when I've looked at these apps now, just recently, it keeps track of the cleaning sessions and it suggests cleaning times that could be required for any given space. So it really takes a lot of the hard work out of the decision making when it comes, how do I make this, this area safe? And you can make a robot run at 2 a.m. You certainly can. And, and, and what's really interesting, Jeff, is that again, all the new research that's coming out on UVC light and bacteria and viruses. Gavin, what do we know about the research that shows that this works? It's a, it's a great question, Jeff, and we've seen a lot of new research come out in 2020 um, involving UVC light and its effect uh, on inactivating the coronavirus. We've seen UVC light for, for disinfection, uh, disinfecting liquids, for example. And there was a recent study in the American Journal of Infection Control that investigated using, using UVC light to kill or inactivate large amounts of coronavirus and liquid cultures. They found that UVC light exposure can completely inactivate the coronavirus in about nine minutes. 
Another study on UVC light for disinfecting services. Now this study was again published in the American Journal of Infection Control and looked at using specific types of UVC light, that 207 to 222 nanometer on different services. And they found that UVC light reduced the live coronavirus by 99.7% in 30 seconds. And again, they used UVC light of wavelengths 207 to 222 nanometers, which is really important because that, that, that wavelength is called far UVC light. And it's very damaging to germs, bacteria, and viruses, but it's less of a hazard to our skin and our eyes than, say, other types of UVC light at different wavelengths. Now, another study looked at UVC light for disinfecting services. And again, this study was published in the um, American Journal of Infection Control. And it, it looked at, uh, again, UVC light uh, in a way that, again, you know, again, we've looked at liquids, we looked at surfaces, and it was another study that, that, again, looked at these surfaces, and they're all starting to align now. They're all starting to so, show very similar results. And this is where I, I, I emphasized right at the beginning of our talk today, uh, Jeff, that real-world evidence is going to drive a lot of these new technologies. Instead of just doing it in the lab, they're now starting to do these studies in real-world situations, in real buildings. And we're still seeing that as we take it out of the lab into a real building, UVC light, you know, especially when it comes, comes to this 207 to 222 nanometer range is proving to be very effective at inactivating the coronavirus that causes the COVID-19 disease. Well, when you said nine minutes, I was gonna wonder, is that long enough to, to, or is that too long to expect to kill the virus? But then you said 30 seconds, definitely a better number. It is, and as we see more research being done, we'll be able to adjust the protocols, the procedures, the standard operating procedures. But I really think that 2021 is going to be a big year for UVC light, not just in the, the static displays, not just shining on keyboards like we've done in the past when it comes to hospitals, but actually in robots that clean large rooms and move around uh, and do it in a way that's safe. Well, Gavin, great information. Thank you for your time today.